T minus 20. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. And Falcon 9 is on its way to delivering Dragon for its 10th commercial release free supply services mission. This is the first time a launch vehicle has left Earth from 39A since the Space Shuttle Atlantis in 2011. Everything continues to proceed nominally. We are just about to transition through max Q, maximum aerodynamic pressure. That's right after we pass uh, supersonic. Max Q is one of the highest stress states on the rocket. Right after this, we're going to be proceeding into uh, kicking over for our inertial pitch. That's where Dragon is going to start going on an orbital trajectory. Everything continuing to look nominally for today's launch. You continue to hear the operators call out there is power and communication system performance as well as propulsion. So you can see the aft. Now what you are seeing is a view from the inside of the second stage. You have main engine cutoff, with stage separation, and we, we have a second stage engine start. You can see the first stage is on its way back for its first maneuver burn. Uh, it will have a three burn process, the entry burn coming up, or the boost back burn, sorry. Meanwhile, the second stage uh, is continued to perform nominally. It's got a six minute burn. The first stage burn continuing to proceed nominally. This uh, boost back burn will go on for about another 10 seconds. So as you just saw, we had a successful uh, main engine cutoff, a successful stage separation, and then a successful stage second engine start. Uh, it was a little cloudy for the Falcon 9 coming off the pad, so we didn't get a great view of it, but it looks like we have a fantastic view of the second stage engine nozzle and the surface of the Earth right now. Yeah, so you guys probably saw it as we did. I don't know about you, but I got chills <laughs> seeing the, the booster fall away uh, from, <laughs> from the engine and just kind of glide back towards Earth and rotating like great shot. Three different burns to get back to landing zone one. There's the boost back burn, which successfully completed. Then there's the re-entry burn, which is to slow us down as we go back through the atmosphere. And then there's the ever exciting landing burn as we approach <laughs> landing zone one. You actually just saw the grid fins on the first stage pop out right there. We use those to uh, dynamically steer the vehicle as it comes back down using uh, air resistance uh, as it passes through supersonic uh, airstreams to get it back towards the landing zone one at Cape Canaveral. Yeah. 
So a lot of really exciting stuff going on right now. We are watching the first stage booster come back down to Earth. It will be going through a series of burns, like Brian said, but primary mission is still going well. Dragon on top of second stage making its way to the International Space Station. A quick note about those grid fins. People always ask us, how do they exert such a large force on such a large cylindrical body? And it's the same principle if you stick your hand outside of a car when you're going 10 miles per hour on neighborhood streets, it doesn't affect you very much. But if you stick your hand outside when you're going 80 miles per hour on the freeway, you can exert a very, very large force upon a large surface simply from the air particles. The grid fins are doing the exact same thing. They're little, little airplane wings that are steering us back to landing zone one. Now, given the cloud conditions at the pad, it doesn't look like we're going to have great video of the first stage coming down from the pad, but we do have a crystal clear video link with the first stage, and just like last landing, I think we're going to have great video all the way back down. Yeah, so just in case if you're joining us right now, we had a cloudy but successful uh, excuse me, liftoff of Falcon 9 from Launchpad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Um, we're watching the booster come back down. The stages have separated. Dragon is on its way to the International Space Station, and uh, just wow, that view is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> You might be seeing bursts on your screen. Those are actually our cold gas thrusters helping to steer the vehicle as well. We have the grid fins, which act as wings of that. We also have nitrogen that we have cold gas, and we spew those to exert small forces to help us laterally as well. So we'll kick it back into JFED, who will give us an update on everything that's going to occur in the next few moments. About six minutes into the count right now, everything continuing to proceed, and nominally, you can see that first stage uh, is guiding back to Earth. It's coming up for its entry burn. It's the second of the three burns. Uh, that entry burn should uh, kick in in about 15 seconds, uh, 15 or 20 seconds from now. Uh, you'll see the engine ignition. Uh, we just deployed the grid fins. You saw those earlier as well. That means we're coming back into the atmosphere, and we'll use those for coming back to Earth. You can also see all the clouds we're about to head through as we come back to Earth. That's why you didn't see as great a video on the way up, and we had to show you an animation. Uh, it was because we did go through the, the clouds. Uh, that call-out was confirmation that the ignition did just occur. Uh, you can see it there on your screen. Uh, a slight delay on the video feed, but you will hear the call-outs uh, as they come up. Uh, this burn itself is going to last for about 15 seconds, and it has just shut down. Uh, looks to be good right there. And then we have a landing burn coming up uh, in about a minute from now. Uh, that landing burn lasting just a touchdown uh, for about 30 seconds. Uh, so you're going to see it uh, come right into landing zone one, uh, stage one there. Uh, meanwhile, on your right side of your screen, you can see stage two. Uh, the stage two burn is going to last for about another two minutes. Uh, continues to look perform very well. Uh, that stage two engine can, has pretty deep throttle capability. It can go from about 81,000 pounds to 210,000 pounds. That's how we target that precision orbit. Uh, we put in a parking orbit of 200 by 600 kilometers. Uh, that's all good there. Meanwhile, stage one is transonic right now, uh, transitioning through the speed of sound as it's coming back to Earth and everything is looking good to go. Okay, so you've got some footage there of the booster as it comes back down. We're waiting for the landing burn to begin very soon. It was cloudy on takeoff, so we are expecting some clouds as we re-enter. So we really hope to be able to bring uh, some really good footage uh, as it comes back down to landing zone one, which is a, on ground. It's not one of our drone ships. And you can see it descending there with the landing zone in the background. It's amazing to think of what's happening. That is coming back from space with live footage. <laughs> It is approaching the landing zone now. Landing zone. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like uh, the clouds are just beginning to break there, uh, making for a pretty picture-perfect landing. Uh, no video from the ground like we had expected earlier, but uh, we did get great video all the way down. Uh, so uh, right now, the second stage looks like it's also proceeding normally. The primary mission today is, of course, to bring the international, uh, the Dragon to the International Space Station. And all, by all accounts, it looks like it's going very well right now. Yeah, That's so awesome. over the next few moments, what's going to come up, second stage is still attached to Dragon, so they're going to continue for a moment. Dragon will deploy its nose cone, that aerodynamic shield that it keeps to move through air efficiently. It will deploy that because once it's out in space, it doesn't need that mass. Then eventually, Dragon will separate from second stage and will continue on its phasing up to the International Space Station. Exactly. During that time, we will also see things like the deployment of the solar arrays uh, from the trunk section, which Brian mentioned earlier in our webcast, that that is the unpressurized section of the uh, Dragon, of the Dragon capsule. 
Now, the Dragon doesn't just go straight to the International Space Station. It actually slowly approaches uh, over a series of days. So we won't actually be getting there today, but once Dragon separates from the International Space Station, it will be slowly uh, executing a series of uh, burn maneuvers, getting, uh, getting it closer and closer. And we actually just got confirmation that we have a good orbit for second, uh, second stage. Uh, and that's wonderful news. Now, in order to get to the International Space Station, we go through what we call a series of phases. We don't just go diagonally up to the International Space Station. We do a series of movements away from the center of the Earth and a series of movements in co-elliptic orbits around the Earth. And those are appropriately named height adjust burns and co-elliptic burns. As we mentioned earlier, there is a safe zone around the International Space Station. So it's not like we can send it up with, uh, you know, uh, thrusters going. We, it's a very controlled movement, uh, very tiny impulses to steer the Dragon, in, in which when it gets close enough, the Canada arm, which is one of the funnest things to say, I think, <laughs> will reach out and catch Dragon by the tail. So it looks like we just had a successful deployment of the Dragon. You can see it on the right-hand side of your screen right there. This is a view from the second stage of the rocket looking up towards the Dragon. And uh, you can see it in the trunk there. Uh, it looks like we had a successful deploy. That's very good news. That's fantastic news. So second stage actually burns a second time. It burned its first time to get Dragon to where it wanted to deploy, then it actually burns a second time after a Dragon has separated, and that's the deorbit second stage. Instead of letting it continue on its natural trajectory that it's on right now, we intend to deorbit into a specific location. So we burn second time, SES2 and SEGO2, second engine start, second engine cutoff, to put it exactly where we want to land. Yeah, so just in case if you've tuned in just recently, uh, we had a great liftoff from launch pad 39A, which of course most of you might recognize as the Apollo 11 and Space Shuttle launch pad. Um, so we had a great liftoff from there. Uh, we had a successful landing of Falcon back at landing zone one on ground. And then we had a wonderful uh, visual confirmation of the separation of Dragon from second stage. So we're actually gonna take it back up to John and get an update on how the Dragon is doing. <laughs> Uh, we are just about 11 minutes into today's mission at this moment. Uh, everything looking nominally. Uh, you heard before already that we had a nominal orbital insertion. A uh, lot to be happy about that. Uh, Dragon, our Falcon put Dragon in a perfect parking orbit. Uh, as we get ready for uh, two days of uh, uh, maneuvers, height adjusts, and co-elliptic burns to get us to the space station. On the right side of your screen, you're seeing an image uh, inside the solar array fairings. Uh, what happens is Dragon actually pop, pops out some solar rays behind some fairings on ascent. Uh, we use these for charging the batteries uh, so we can begin our on-orbit operations. Uh, now, Dragon does carry four large batteries on board. Uh, these batteries, however, do not last enough for the two days that we have to get to the space station. So we use solar rays to charge, uh, charge those batteries and keep, them, keep, them, uh, keep the spacecraft functioning. Uh, we are berthing with the space station uh, on the 20th, uh, about 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that will be coming up uh, uh, at that point in time, 22nd, sorry, the 22nd, we're going to be berthing with the space station uh, with the hatch ingress uh, soon after that. Uh, Shane Kimbrough and Thomas Pesquet uh, will be opening Dragon, uh, will be actually doing the berthing operations, then opening shortly thereafter. Uh, now what Dragon actually has to do uh, and why we're uh, kind of holding on here for a second as you're seeing the inside of the vehicle uh, is uh, Dragon has to prime the thrusters before uh, and make sure the prop system works functionally. And then as you can see right there, the solar rays themselves are going to come out. Uh, and that is, that is a beautiful sight always to see that those solar rays will uh, unfurl. Uh, those solar rays contained uh, attached to the trunk themselves, one on either side. Uh, and Kind of in the middle of your screen, towards the bottom middle of the screen, you can see the hinge uh, that they are connected to the trunk. And that's actually how we rotate the solar rays uh, about the trunk and, and use our pointing operations to, to charge the batteries that I mentioned before. You're actually looking at the back side of the solar rays. Uh, that's actually the solar array wiring uh, as, as we do the interconnects of the modules. And, and that's the other side of the solar array. You can see kind of the, the cresting of the earth in the bottom as well. So. For now, everything continues to look nominally, uh, proceed nominally on orbit. Uh, no issues to report from Dragon. Um, at this moment, we are in a, in a, uh, a perfect orbit, uh, as, as good as you could hope at this moment. Um, everything on Dragon continuing to look good. Uh, and you saw, you saw as well that first stage uh, landed back at landing zone one for our first daytime landing. That was, uh, that was a beautiful sight as well for, for sure today. So, uh, everything here is looking good, so uh, let's check back in downstairs with the rest of our team.